Welcome back, my friends, to an episode of TFT Hyper Roll, the final game of TFT Hyper Roll from the first part of set six. Next week, I plan on putting out a video that will be sort of a guide to Hyper Roll in season 6.5, as I've seen it so far. It's not going to be definitive, it's based off the PBE and it'll be subject to change. We'll talk all about that then. Meanwhile, like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff to help the algorithm. The channel's mission for tuition, you know why? We're trying to pay for tuition for our son. So help, why wouldn't you? Anyway, with that said, let's get started and let's get into this match. You probably already know what it's about. But hey, let's see the journey there anyway. So of course we buy out the force board, go through the NPC round, and then see what the augments give to us. Now when I saw these, I could have gone Portable Forge, but I had an Ezreal, so I decide to go for the Tome of Traits and hope Gary is at his desk and will give me, yes, an Innovator Emblem. Just what I'm looking for. And whenever I get that, I'm hoping to pair it up with a Scrap, since Ezreal's a Scrap and an Innovator. And while there is a long way to go to the end, this at least gives you a really solid start. With Ezreal getting a full item and the entire team getting a shield, I'm pretty confident I'm going to be able to win early. Of course, the test with this will come as we start trying to get to five and hopefully to seven innovators. And spoiler alert, innovator still exists in 6.5 and is still really strong. And of course, you know what I'm going to do here because I have a giant spell, so that means I can't resist the chain vest that I'm going to turn into a Sunfire Cape. And you'll see why right here, because even though Ezreal gets pulled, it's singed to just keep setting people on fire by just hanging out around them. Everyone's focused on getting EZ down, but meanwhile they are slowly burning to death, which is probably not a pleasant way to go. Out of that taste. And even though I'm rolling like crazy, I can't seem to find that two star silver sin. So he's just a little bronzy out there. So once they focus on him, he goes down. And while he's definitely doing a lot of damage with his Sunfire Cape, yeah, it's not necessarily going to hold up long enough to win against this type of team. Now here I do something I don't normally do and let me explain why. Because I already have the Innervator Emblem, I'm thinking I can get the Dragon and the Dragon does a lot of magic damage. Thus I decide to go with the Static Shiv on Ezreal so that he's reducing the magic resistance across the enemy team. Normally I just build Ezreal AD and use him for straight damage this time I'm using him to weaken the opponents. I also want to get everyone as high up as possible because of course the dragon strength is going to be based off of how many gold units I end up with. Luckily again, Ezreal keeps getting pulled, but the team is able to hold on. So for the second augment, normally I would go with healing, but again, I'm thinking dragon. Thus I go with ascension, because the dragon is going to fear things away and make the overall match last longer than it might have without a dragon involved. And for those of you looking for a little preview of 6.5, in the next set, Echo is also an innovator as well as Scrap. Since Heimer does not exist, Echo has taken over that role, and so we would be at five innovators at this point, but we win either way with four, thanks to Zillion and a nice bomb. So even though that needlessly large rod is screaming for a bow to become a rage blade, I decide to go with the loaded dice because I want to try to get to a gold Ezreal. Unfortunately, the game says, no, there's, there's just no more Ezreals for you right now. So at this point, I'm kind of kicking myself a little bit because that felt like a wasted opportunity, but I did get an additional zillion so that maybe I can get zillion up to gold. The more gold, the better for the dragon. Now, right now, this all looks a little bit easy. We're just cruising through these teams, but there's a little bit of a trap up ahead. I need three more innovators to get to seven, and Heimer right now seems particularly difficult to get. You just know there's a Yordle team out there gobbling up all the Heimers, so I'm hoping I'm able to get at least some. 
so I managed to find a Seraphine before the Hymer, have most of my other champs getting kind of close to gold, and then I decide to go with the Scrap Crest on the off chance that maybe I either don't get the seven Innovators and have to go to six Scrap, or get really lucky and end up with six Scrap and seven Innovators, but I am going to need Hymer to make that work. Since Zillion is looking very good to get to gold, I decide to load him up with that Scrap Emblem, of course, and then a Hextech so I can get some healing across my team and then let that needlessly large rod turn into anything else at once. I find a Hymer hanging out at the bottom, so the last step is going to be Jace. But just when I thought I was cruising to Easy Street, along comes a team with a Gold Garen and a Gold Katarina that can absolutely wreck me with the blue buff Hextech and the Rabadon, so she is putting out a lot, a lot of damage, and my ascension on a single Ezreal is not going to save me. And I really deserve this for playing cocky the last few rounds. I knew there were a lot of blitzes out there, but I had been managing to avoid them and win in spite of being pulled, but in this case, they pulled my Zillion, who was probably my strongest champ at this point since he was loaded up and while the ascension almost helps that gold blitzcrank is pretty much able to finish me off. We're getting into crunch time and no matter how this goes I have two lives left. I can suffer two losses. I decide to get the Hextech Gunblade and use that to create more healing on my team so I can stay up longer. I'm having to start think about backup plans and so I grab a Jinx and the Ascension will certainly help which means I want as much healing as possible across the entire team if I can't get that Jace. But I really shouldn't have worried too much because Gary and I have been tight for a long time. And so I should realize that since my guess is he's at his desk, he's going to give me the ability to get a Jace. So one more roll, and there's the Jace that's going to give me the dragon. Now the difference is, at this point in the season, the dragon is not as OP as it once was, so it doesn't guarantee victories anymore. It's certainly strong, and it's pretty much going to guarantee you a top four, but not necessarily the guaranteed first place that you used to be able to count on any time you saw a dragon on your team. Once we have that dragon and given where our Socialite Hex is. We're gonna keep the Dragon in the Socialite Hex. We're gonna play Clump up around the Dragon and try to use it as the ability to keep things away from us. Obviously, Echo's going to jump to the back, which is good. That will take care of far away threats, but we're counting on the Dragon to keep us alive. This choke could be a problem because he's going to be immune to the Dragon's roar, but with the Ascension, there is enough power to take him down and bring us into the top four. And just when you think you have it all figured out, remember that team with the gold cat and the gold garen and lots of power? Yeah, well, they're running Academy, which is going to be gone next season, but for the purpose of this game, it still exists and it's still very, very strong. And it's able to power its way through my dragon get to my gold zillion and poke him out of existence. Now even though my dream of six scrap was gone, I held on to that jinx just in case and at this point it's time to look for whatever I can get. So once I can get a two star jinx, we can take Echo out of the fight, put the scrap emblem onto her and hope she will give us that extra power that's going to be needed to bring it over the top. Remember, this is really what I got Ascension for, a champion like her who's going to be super powered towards the end. We're facing a team of Yordles, which would normally be the absolute death of us, but Jinx lands just where I need her to, right in the middle of everyone, the Ascension kicks in, and she is able to wreck the opposing team, allowing me to survive for what will ultimately be the final showdown because those two teams are facing each other. 
I'm now able to complete pretty much everything I want as I get my Singed up to gold, making my dragon now even stronger, and I have my Fiora up to two stars. The Fiora is mainly in the game because I want to have Enforcer. Now here's where luck played in. The Yordles were able to beat the Academy team, which gives me the easier team to end up facing because I've beaten the Yordle team before, but the Academy team was creaming me every single time. They also have their Yordle separated a little bit, which works out really well for me, but my Jinx lands right where she needs to and just starts tearing them apart as the Ascension kicks in. If you think you're going to get the Dragon, go for Ascension, and again, this will continue to work in 6.5, so have this build still in your head for the future. Hope you enjoyed the video and have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.